Welcome to the University of Wolverhampton presentation on working in a group. In this presentation, we will look at why we are asked to do group work, discuss what can cause a bad group work experience, and look at what skills are required for successful group work. Group work can take many different forms. You may have been asked to collaborate on a written piece of work, such as a report. You may have been asked to work with others on a presentation, or you could be working in a team to create something, such as a piece of software. All of these different types of group work will require you to work with other students in a professional manner. The ability to work as part of a team is a skill that many employers look for specifically in job applicants. You will need to be able to work with other students. You will need people skills, communication skills and, depending on the end product of your collaboration, presentation and written communication skills. If a project is making no progress it can be very frustrating and you need to consider the reasons for this lack of progress. It could be that one person is doing all the work either because other people are not pulling their weight or because they do not want to relinquish control over the project. Either of these scenarios could cause your project to fail. Another reason for possible project failure is that the group may not be clear about what they are doing. All members of the group need to know what is expected of them, how they are contributing to the project and how their contribution affects other members of the team. Because of this, the group needs to be clear about the proposed outcomes of the project, exactly what needs to be achieved. There is also the problem of disputes within the group. Disputes can arise for many reasons. If they arise, they need to be resolved as quickly as possible. The group needs to work together so that all members of the group can pass their assignment. At this point, you may need to put your ego on hold. There are two main skills you will need for successful group work. These are organisational skills and interpersonal skills. Organisational skills will be required to formulate a plan, to set rules for the group and to have effective meetings. Interpersonal skills will be necessary for communication within the group to ensure that the right people are assigned to the right role and to effectively resolve disputes. There are several steps you will need to take to try and ensure your group work project runs smoothly. You need to set ground rules, have a plan, hold regular meetings, keep records, settle disputes and avoid plagiarism. We will now look at each of these steps individually. Ground rules are about how the group is going to work. All groups have them, though they are often unwritten and implicit. If you want to make sure your group runs smoothly, you may want to make them explicit. Ground rules can be very open and general. For example, you may want to state that every member of the group needs to take responsibility for their own learning, or that everyone should encourage and support the other members of the group. You may think it is unnecessary to write down such rules, but it may help settle disputes later on. Ground rules can also be very specific. For example, you may want to specify the format of intergroup communication, specifying that all such communication be carried out via email. You may also want to set ground rules regarding what action will be taken if someone in the group does not pull their weight. For example, if they do not complete their share of work, or if they repeatedly miss meetings. When you are set a piece of group work, make sure you understand what is required. This means understanding the question and also what the end result needs to be. When you are sure what is required, you need to assign roles and tasks within the group. Different people will have different personality types which may affect your choice but could also lead to conflict. For example, if you have two or more natural leaders within the group, one or more will be disappointed. When you are assigning roles and tasks, you should also look at people's strengths and weaknesses. While it is good to play to people's strengths, you may also want to consider the need for people to develop their skills. It is also important to set realistic deadlines for when different tasks are to be completed. The key to successful meetings is to be businesslike about them. Have an agenda, take minutes and assign responsibilities. This way everyone will know what is expected of them. Make sure everyone is clear about items being discussed and about what is going to be done. Make sure everyone knows when and where the meeting will be. 
You may also want to consider whether or not you actually need to physically meet. Could you hold a virtual meeting online using a chat room or email? There will always be a social element to meetings, but you need to control this element so that you can attend to the business in hand. You could set some ground rules regarding meetings that could confine the social element. There are various reasons for keeping accurate records throughout your project. It is important to keep a record of what is happening both for the continued well-being of the project and also for your own information when it is time to write up your work. Accurate record keeping could also help resolve disputes if a member of the group is unclear about what they have agreed to do. Records can be kept as emails or on Google Drive, as paper documents or on programs such as PebblePad. There will be times when disputes or conflicts are unavoidable. You may find someone in the group is not doing their fair share, or someone may feel that they are doing more than everyone else. There may be disputes regarding roles and responsibilities. It is a good idea to set ground rules for dealing with disputes, but you need to be aware that the very act of setting ground rules may cause dissatisfaction. If you have a dispute or conflict, try to deal with it in as professional manner as possible. Document the dispute and the resolution as this information may be useful. The ability to resolve problems is an important skill for employability. It may be that part of your assignment is group work and part is individual. If this is the case, you need to be very clear about which parts are which in order to avoid charges of collusion and plagiarism. Another way of avoiding plagiarism is to keep accurate records of who contributed what to the project. For help and further information, please visit the Skills for Learning pages at the University of Wolverhampton.